Welcome to the deep dive. You know, sometimes the weather forecast just feels off, right? Well, today we're diving into a really baffling one. This forecast for an early autumn Arctic outbreak. Yeah. It's set to blast uh, basically the eastern two thirds of the US and central and eastern Canada. We're talking the first two weeks of September 2025. It's almost like Mother Nature's hitting fast forward past fall, giving us a kind of winter preview. Seriously, an October like chill for millions. But, and this is the weird part, at the same time, Western North America is absolutely baking, potentially yep. record-breaking heat. It creates this uh, this wild continental temperature dipole, like two different planets on one continent. So our mission today, let's try to unmask what's actually causing this, understand the, well, the surprising knock-on effects, and figure out what this fake fall really means. Ready to jump in? Yeah, it's fascinating because the um, the atmospheric drivers behind this are pretty unusual for this time of year. We're seeing things like a... a a record week stratospheric polar vortex. Polar vortex, right. That high altitude thing. Exactly. Think of it like a sort of a natural container way up high, holding all that Arctic cold air in the north. But when it gets weak, that container, well, it breaks down. And that lets this rare cross polar flow happen. The polar flow? Yeah. Essentially, the Arctic cold gets like an express lane straight south towards us, much more direct than usual. Okay. So that's the, the hint of the strangeness. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's peel that back. Uh, what is really causing this super early cold blast? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the polar vortex isn't September usually when it starts getting stronger. That's, that's exactly the key point. The main driver, the catalyst here, is this anomalously weak stratospheric polar vortex. You're right, normally September is when that big pool of cold air starts to consolidate to strengthen after the summer. Mm. But right now, forecasts are showing it at or, you know, near record low strength for this time of year. That's a really profound anomaly. And that weakness is what basically sets the stage. It preconditions the atmosphere for that cross-polar flow you mentioned. It's letting that frigid Arctic air channel directly southwards. Honestly, it's a pattern much more like uh, deep winter than early autumn. That's incredible. Something happening miles up, dictating whether I need a jacket. Yeah. So how does that high altitude weakness, how does it actually trickle down to affect the temperatures we feel here on the ground? Right, good question. So this high level flow, this cross polar thing, it directly influences the jet stream pattern lower down in the troposphere where our weather happens. Yeah. Imagine the jet stream, normally kind of wavy, right? Now picture it taking these huge, deep north south swings, like a massive roller coaster in the sky. Okay. So you get a big ridge, like a hump of high pressure building in the west. That tracks heat, leading to that intense late season heat wave we talked about. We're talking mid to upper 30 Celsius, maybe even threatening Canada's all time September record in the BC interior. That's serious heat. It is. But then downstream, you get this deep trough, like a valley of low pressure digging into the east. And that trough acts like a chute, just funneling that Arctic air southward. That's why we're seeing forecasts for temperatures uh, maybe 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. That's like 5.5 to 11 Celsius below average, affecting, you know, over 200 million people. Wow. So like Chicago going from maybe near 80 Fahrenheit down to the mid 60s pretty quick. Exactly. That kind of rapid drop, a real shock to the system. Okay. So this clearly isn't just about, you know, digging out sweaters early. This has some pretty serious real world consequences, right? What about say agriculture? Yeah. Agriculture is a big one. The threat there is significant. An early killing frost, that's when it dips below 28 Fahrenheit or minus 2 Celsius, or even just a damaging light frost, say 30 to 36 Fahrenheit, that poses a real risk, especially for corn and soybean crops across the Midwest. A lot of those crops just haven't reached full maturity yet. And a frost could really hurt the yield. Oh, definitely. In the fields that are least developed, you could be looking at um, up to 50% yield loss, potentially. It's a major curveball for farmers. And it goes beyond crops, doesn't it? What about energy markets? You mentioned an unscheduled stress test. Exactly. This kind of sudden early pulled demand for heating can cause a premature slowdown in putting natural gas into storage for the winter. That could easily lead to some price volatility. Plus, there's always the risk of production freeze offs where the cold actually disrupts natural gas extraction itself if it hits key areas hard and fast. And I guess just day to day safety, too. For sure. You know, that first surprise frost can make roads, especially bridges and overpasses, unexpectedly slick, catches drivers off guard, and even potentially frozen pipes for homes that weren't prepared for winter conditions quite yet. It's like getting a winter pop quiz in September. It sounds really dramatic. 
But okay, we keep hearing about overall warming trends, so how do we square this intense but maybe short-term cold, this fake fall, with that bigger picture? Does this mean autumn's just here early now? That's a really good question, and it gets to the heart of this fake fall idea. While the short-term weather models are screaming cold, the longer-range outlooks, like from NOAA's Climate Prediction Center, they still favor uh, generally above-average temperatures for the second half of September overall. Oh, okay. So the thinking is that this intense cold is likely a powerful but ultimately transient event. A temporary disruption caused by this specific, unusual atmospheric setup. The underlying warmer background pattern is probably going to reassert itself once this polar vortex situation sorts itself out or the jet stream shifts again. It's not a permanent shift to winter, more like a dramatic but short-lived swing. Right. So let's recap this deep dive then. We've got this dramatic, unseasonably early chill, a fake fall hitting a huge part of North America. And it's basically being driven by this uh, really unusual weakness high up in the polar vortex, allowing Arctic air to spill south. And that's having real impacts on everything from farming to energy prices to just driving safely. Exactly. And looking ahead, the broader takeaway perhaps for autumn 2025 is that we should probably expect uh, high variability and volatility. It suggests we shouldn't plan for a smooth slide into fall, but maybe more for these pronounced swings between temperature extremes. Back and forth a bit. Hmm. That variability point is interesting. Yeah. It leaves us with a thought for you, our listener. Knowing this fake fall might just be temporary, that this cold blast could potentially flip back towards warmer weather later this month. How might understanding these complex, sometimes short-term atmospheric connections change how you approach your seasonal planning? You know, preparing your home, your garden, or even just deciding what to wear in the morning. Something to think about.